Hey there, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be working on two quick and easy to the last minute Christmas DIYs. So let's get started. What we're going to work here with is this bucket I picked up from Dollar Tree. We're going to go ahead and remove the rope around the top, but save it because we will re-glue it back on. And once I'm done doing this, I'm going to spray paint it with some white matte spray paint. Now you could skip this step, of course, and leave the bucket silver. It would look really pretty. Uh, not an issue. This is what it looks like painted. And then I'm just taking some some 120 grit sandpaper and distressing around the edges. We're going to make a really pretty kind of lighted greenery display. Like I said, quick and easy. You could put in the center of like your Christmas dinner table or something like that would look really beautiful. And this quote that I have here, it's a vinyl quote. I created it in Cricut Design Space. I'm having to cut up the quote because the bucket, since it goes narrow from the bottom and large to the top, if I was just to wrap this quote on like normal, it would will kind of wrap crooked. So I'm having to cut it up a little bit and then rub it on in parts um, so that it goes on straight. Now, of course, if you don't have an electronic cutting machine, you know, Dollar Tree has all sorts of letter stickers and rub-ons. You could print a really neat quote off of the internet, use carbon paper, trace it on, and then like a Sharpie marker and go in and write your quote on there. Anything like that, of course, would work and be beautiful. So I'm just kind of showing this entire process here. I decided right here that I needed to go ahead and um, cut the M off as well to make this lay straight on my bucket. But this is the process I had to go through. I wanted to kind of show you the whole thing. Now this quote, I saw part of it on something from, you know, a picture I saw from a store I think it said Christmas market and then I made up the rest that said serving joy number 1952 just to make it fun. Using Beacon Fabric Tack Glue today, going to go ahead and glue our rope back on. Because I just like the rope, it just adds nice texture. I'm not going to show gluing all of it because you know, you know how to glue rope back on. And then once this is done, I'm going to go in with the spray glitter that I get from uh, Walmart. I get it in the craft section. Um, I don't know if you can see the glitter here a little bit, but I tried to slow it down for you. This is what I use. It's about $7, but lasts a long, long time. And now I've got a piece of twine and red and white twine and these ornaments from Walmart. And I'm going to add these to the front of our bucket here and a silver bell that I went ahead off camera and painted white with some white chalk paint. So I'm just going to glue my uh, twine bow on here. And in my red and white twine, I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. I use like buckets of this red and white twine. And then I tied some twine around it, this word ornament and made it really short so I could kind of glue it right in the middle. And so it's kind of hanging off sideways on the bows. And then I'm pushing that center of the bell in so that it'll be nice and flat to glue on the center here. Let that sit up a bit. And now we're going to go ahead and add some greenery, or not greenery, some gel foam in the center. It's green, is why I said greenery. And this is a, a moss sheet I get from Dollar Tree. That gel foam came from Dollar Tree as well. You can see how there's a circle on uh, the outside package of this sheet here. I traced the top of the bucket onto it, and I'm leaving it in the package to cut it out because I thought it would be a little bit less messy. And then it should just kind of fit right in the top. This is some greenery that you can get from Dollar Tree I'll be using. This is greenery from Joy and Hobby Lobby that I'll be using um, and I'm gluing down the greenery on top of the gel foam here and then I'm just going to go in and start tucking in now I like to use snowy greenery I place the shortest pieces in the front and kind of go longer to the back and I kind of go a little bit symmetrical as I'm placing the pieces in just filling in the spaces in here filling little pieces in the front. It's really um, quite easy. Every once in a while I had a little bit of a hard time poking through that moss sheet, but it kind of has open weave backing on it. So it's pretty easy to go ahead and kind of poke your greenery through it into the foam. But you know, any Dollar Tree greenery, of course you can use. But as you can see the type of greenery, like I put on one side, I kind of put the same on the other side, of course. That makes it easier for me because I'm not a designer by any means. This is some greenery I picked up at Hobby Lobby, or a floral designer anyway, so I put one on the left and then of course I will uh, do the same thing and put one on the right side. 
that just helps me to do a little better but like I said from short to a little taller in the back greenery from Joann's one on each side I think this is the one I had a little trouble poking in there but I got it in there into that moss sheet this is some beaded uh, berries I love to get from Hobby Lobby I'll be poking in and again some more of this snowy greenery I'm gonna use a great big pick in the back here and this is the same greenery I was tucking little bits into the front the very front there next to the pine cone and these are some really long pieces that came off a of swag. They're really long right now, so they look funny. I'm going to use three of them and poke them in the back. But later I'll go down because they're wiry and bendy, so I can kind of bend them down a little bit to make them a little bit shorter. And you can poke them way down into that foam, of course. And I, this is kind of a one-sided, uh, you know, uh, greenery here I don't like make it all the way around so it can be seen from both sides just because I didn't have a lot of greenery left over but this is kind of what it looks like um, once those pieces are stuck in the back and I'm just tucking in more of the snowy greenery here making it look a little bit more fuller through the center going to be adding in my beaded berries give it a little bit of color I didn't want to like have to wire everything so I'm trying to make like a little loop at the bottom to poke it in through that uh, gel foam and stuff down at the bottom. I didn't wait long enough. I keep having to push my bell back on because I got anxious to get started to put everything in so I kept knocking my bell off. So you might want to wait a little bit if you decide to add a bell there. Uh, let it set up before you start adding your greenery. Because, you know, you're turning your bucket back and forth and tucking stuff in and you're hitting it and the bell and stuff like that. So just a little piece of advice. Tucking in more uh, of the berries. Now, I try to add odd numbers. So I have two berries in the front, two berries kind of at the back. And then I'll add there's the fifth berry on the front. So it makes uh, or in the middle. So it makes like five berries. So kind of odd numbers. Going to be tucking in some of this beautiful, I love this uh, pick from Dollar Tree. So I think I cut it up and do about five pieces as well. So I'll add a couple on the sides, near the front, then in the back, then in the center. Kind of give that odd number look because that's what they say is pleasing to the eye, odd numbers. And I just think it adds a little texture and just makes it, you know, a little bit more high-end looking. There's kind of that fifth piece. Now I'm going to add some lights. These are lights from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to show stringing it. You can hide it kind of right in that greenery in the back. So it stays up because you want to be able to get to it with the batteries, of course, to change the batteries out. And then I like to tuck it in and around the greenery, of course. But I'll tuck it enough that you don't really see uh, the wire and stuff. I just don't like that to really show. But literally, I think I put this together in about 20 minutes. Besides the spray painting, that takes a little time to dry. But I'll turn some lights off here in just a couple so you can see it how it lights up. But then once this light is in and all together, this project is complete. Before we go on to project number two, I want to take a moment and introduce myself. My name is Linda and I have been a crafter for years. I love to do all sorts of home decor projects from farmhouse to rustic to primitive, even paper crafting. I just dabble in a little bit of everything. So I hope you'll go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video from me. If you're on Instagram, I do have that. Come on, say hi. I'd love to see you there as well. And also, if you're on Facebook, I do have a Facebook group. I'll have that link in the description box for you if you'd like to come join up for more inspiration. So let's move on to project number two. 
So for this project, I have two rolls of felt from Dollar Tree. Now you're gonna need one at least white and the other color, whatever you can get or whatever you like, and then a piece of brown felt from Walmart, these wood stickers from Dollar Tree, and then just a piece of twine. We're gonna be making a cute hot cocoa ornament. And then I have the sequin mix. Uh, you know, you don't have to have this. I just thought it'd be fun later. Now you're gonna need a piece of paper, card stocks, what I'm using here that measures two and a half inches by nine inches. But you're also gonna need a piece of felt that measures three and a half inches by 10 inches. You're gonna need the cardstock and the felt with this piece here. This is gonna make our main cup, okay? So it's one inch bigger, the felt is one inch bigger than your cardstock. All right, so for your next piece, you're just gonna need a piece of square felt or rectangle, I guess, three inches by four inches. You don't need any cardstock for this. For your next one, you're gonna need two circles here two and a half inches and I used a hole punch to make my two and a half inch circle but if you don't have that you could use one of those um, protractors is that what they're called <laughs> to make your two and a half inch circle now you need one piece of cardstock for this and then you need one without so you need a piece of brown felt that measures two and a half inches no cardstock and then you need a piece of felt that's gonna measure three and a half inches with your two and a half inch piece of cardstock. Does that make sense? It'll make sense when we're going through it. And then you're gonna need three strips of white felt. This is all you need for the white felt, one and a half inch wide, and then five and a half inches or so long. So for our one piece of, uh, that goes with the cardstock here, two and a half inch cardstock, three and a half inch circle of felt. We're gonna be using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue today. So this is the one that I thought might have been a little bit confusing on. Glue your cardstock to your felt. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut little slits in our felt. Do not go all the way to the cardstock. Go about an eighth inch shy. And then you're gonna, what we're gonna do, add some glue to the outer edge on your felt. And then we're just going to go ahead and glue this all the way around onto our cardstock. This is gonna make us a nice little end and it's gonna be the bottom of our cup. And you can use hot glue for this if you want. Then we're gonna go ahead and make our cup piece here. What you wanna do is just kind of break the fibers of your paper and kind of bend it around so you can get it in a nice circle so it's a little more flexible. And you want it to be, I'm just gonna mark it here where I'm gonna glue it. You want it to glue together so that it's the same size as your piece of cardstock, okay? Once you glue that together, making sure again it's the same size as that two and a half inch circle, making sure with the other one as well, I like to double check. Then we're gonna go ahead and glue our felt to the cardstock. Now I know our felt is gonna be way bigger because we glued this piece of cardstock together, you know, cause we originally cut the felt to fit the cardstock before we glued it into a circle, but that's okay. It all goes together fine. It was just a little bit easier for me to try to assemble this way. And then what we're gonna do is the same thing as we did the bottom of our cup. We're gonna make little slits here. Again, do not go all the way to the cup. Go about at least an eighth of an inch shy. Make slits top and bottom. I saw this cup on, uh, I think it was an Instagram picture. I'm like, I've gotta be able to develop a pattern to make this. So this is how I came up to make it because I just thought it was so cute. And then you're gonna tuck in, you're gonna add felt, of course, glue to your felt and then tuck in your felt along the inside of your cup area. Again, glue on the edge of the felt and then tuck it down to the inner portion of your cup. Nice and easy. The thin felt worked perfectly for this. Uh, I made a smaller cup, you'll see it at the end in the, on the little tree using thicker felt and it looked good but it was a little bit bulky. So then what you're gonna do is glue your bottom of your cup to the main portion of your cup and I like to add a little bit of stuffing here just to take up the space and we're gonna glue in our hot chocolate piece here. We're just gonna add a little glue right around the edge and then when you go to glue this in, you're gonna kind of glue it in, but push it to the sides of the cup, push it down and to the sides. You can see how I'm kind of doing that here. That way it's in nice and good, got our little hot chocolate there. And now we're going to make the handle of our cup. You're gonna add glue to the short end, one short end of your felt and roll it really, 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 really tight. And then we're gonna, I just trimmed off a little excess. It was thick enough and then glue the remainder together. And then my ends are not neat, they're kind of sticking out. So I'm gonna take some scissors and even that end out. 
just like that. And then I'm going to take in and bend the end in about a half an inch so it'll make a little handle here. Then we're going to glue our little marshmallows together. Again, adding glue to one end of the short felt, roll it up, and then glue the other end together. And when we're done, we'll have three little cute marshmallows. Now we're going to glue our handle, glue on both ends, and I like to glue where the seam is and kind of hold it on there, glue it together. Once that's set, go ahead and glue in your little marshmallows. Super cute. And then I'm going to use some spray glitter just to give it a little glitz. And then I've got the wooden snowflake here and I've got a white paint on my pouncy brush. I'm going to pounce it on, heat set it in between, and I'm going to repeat that twice so I have nice uh, texture here on my snowflake and I'll go ahead and glue that on. I was really hoping for some blue felt at our Dollar Tree but I had purple so that's what I ended up with. And now here comes some of those gems and stuff from that little sequin mix and some cute little star shaped sequins and I'm just going to kind of glue those on around the snowflake. You could skip this step if you don't have that of course but I just thought it'd add a little bit more cute texture. And then I'm going to use my crocodile here and I'm going to make a hole at the top of my cut behind that handle so that I can hang my twine. I'm going to double knot it, cut off the excess, and once this is done, this project is complete. I think these hot cocoa cups turned out so adorable. I am so glad I was able to figure out a pattern to share them with you. I know both of these projects are last minute, but I had just these last two ideas I wanted to get out to you before Christmas. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know if you're going to try one of these projects for Christmas or if you're going to put them in the idea bin for next year. Remember, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video from me. Please give this video a thumbs up. I want to wish you all a very, very, very Merry Christmas. I hope it's a blessed one for you. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.